man, woman, birth, death, infinity. <laughs> Good afternoon, and welcome to the Your Health Television Program here on AMPS Cable Channel 24 and on the internet at www.ampmedia.org. Join our rotating host and their informative guests live every Monday afternoon at 4 o'clock. The purpose of the Your Health Television Program is to help get, make, and keep listeners and viewers like you healthy. And now, ladies and gentlemen, on with the program. Welcome to the Your Health Television Program, hosted by the Monterey County Health Department. I'm Emily Shelto, your host today, and just about every third, day, third Monday of each month. Thanks so much for joining us. We have a great lineup of guests in the studio today to provide you with the 411 on how to stay within the law and out of trouble in 2012. Yes, that's right. Along with a fresh start, the new 2012 year has also brought us a whole host of new laws that are now in effect. As of January 1st, 2012, we, as Californians, are no longer able to carry handguns openly in public, buy alcohol at self-serve checkout stands, or purchase shark fins for soup dishes, if you're into that sort of thing. We will, however, see breaking ground on a new bullet train in Southern California, an accurate portrayal of the contributions of lesbians, gays, bisexual, and transgender Americans in grade school instructional materials, and hopefully the rescue of any state parks that are facing closure as nonprofit agencies are now able to take over state park operations to avoid closing. Also among highlights of the hundreds of new measures that took effect on January 1st are new laws regarding child car seats, cyberbullying, and tanning. Today, we're going to take a closer look at each of these new mandates to see how they impact you and your health. I'd like to welcome my first guest to the program. Sitting across from me now is Susan Kent. Traffic Safety and Injury Prevention Coordinator at the Monterey County Health Department. Welcome, Susan, and thanks for being here. Thank you, Emily. Thanks for having me. Indeed. So, Susan, I've been told that there's a new car seat law um, that took effect January 1st, 2012. Please tell me more. Yes, the new law did take effect as of January 1st, 2012, and this one is a, a new booster seat law for children under eight must be in a booster seat or a car seat. And um, they must be sitting in the back of the car and additionally children eight or older are n who are not tall enough for the car seat belt to fit properly must ride in a booster seat as well. Okay, so how do parents and drivers know if a seat belt um, fits properly even if a child is, is over age eight? Well, there's some things to look out for, and here's what parents and drivers and caretakers should look out for. Um, can the child sit all the way back with their back on the, the back of the auto seat? Can the child's knees bend naturally at the edge of the cushion of the seat? Does the lap belt cross the top of the hips and the thighs? That's lower down, not, the, not farther up on the waist in the stomach. And it is a shoulder belt centered on the shoulder and the chest. That means it's not going across the neck. And lastly, can the ch child stay seated in that position for the whole trip? If you cannot answer yes to all five of these, that means if you answer no to any one of them, then your child is not ready for a regular car seat. Okay, so... Let's see, what else should, pa should a parent look for or, or know about, um, about seat belt use? Well, let's hold up the illustration oh, sure. and talk about that a little bit. This illustrates the, the points that we were talking about where it says, you can see here that the seat belt does not fit properly. Here where it says no, the seat belt is too high on the waist, and where it says no, the seat belt is going across the neck. This child clearly needs a booster seat. The other one, he's in the booster seat, and you can see that he's raised up, and the seat belt now hits in the, into the hips and across the shoulders. And he looks comfortable. It and looks like he could stay there for the whole ride. Right. And one of the th other things that a parent should look for is that the child should never put the cross belt or the harness belt behind their shoulder or their arm. 
uh, in a crash, the child could be seriously hurt doing this because the restraint is not working properly and they can get spinal and neck injuries from that. Uh, so if the child does not fit into the seat properly, then the parent or driver really needs to put the child into a booster seat. I see. So that when they put it behind their back like that, it means that they're uncomfortable. It means that they're uncomfortable and it's not fitting correctly. Gotcha. So that's something to look for. Um, talking about booster seats, now what exactly is a booster seat? It's different from a car seat. Well, a car seat, when parents usually think of a car seat, they think of a bigger seat with a harness coming out of the car seat. A booster seat is a seat that just basically boosts the child up in height. And that height helps the car seat and the seat belt, I mean the seat belt to fit much better so that then when the child is raised up, the belt will go across the shoulders and then will be lowered down across the, uh, the, the hips. In other words, the booster seat helps the seat belt fit across the heavy bones of the child, which are stronger to deal with a crash and help prevent injuries. Okay, so it just puts them in a better place to, to fit into the, the seat and the seat belt. Yeah, and the booster seat should not be used with just a lap belt alone. It should be used with the cross belt and uh, the, the shoulder belt as well. Okay, so if your car doesn't have the shoulder belt, you might think about well, getting... Yeah, one of the things you can do, and this is a problem with uh, parents or drivers with older cars, of course, one of the things they can do is go to their local garage and see if they can get a cross belt or harness belt installed. And in most cases, they can. The other thing they can do is to look for a car seat that will hold older kids and take more weight. So that way, they'll be still be in the car seat. And what will happen is the lap belt can go off it go across, but the harness in the, old, in the larger car seat will hold them really well. And then, of course, the most expensive thing is they can get a new car. Oh, that might be, that's an option, I guess. <laughs> Maybe not the best, but uh, you gave quite a few. So um, what about, um, wh so what was the old law? How is this law different from the, from the old law? And why was this new law passed? Well, the previous law said that required children to be in a car seat or a booster seat until six years old or 60 pounds. Uh, car crashes ca kill more than four, uh, a lot of children four to eight years old, more than anything else does. Uh, seat belts are designated for, are designed for adults and do not fit properly children that are uh, four feet nine and under. So to protect your child, you want them to be in a car seat or a booster seat. And a booster seat uh, is proven to help, or a car seat helps protect children four to eight years uh, by about 45% more compared to seat belts alone. Okay, so the old law was six years old. Yes. And now it's, now it's eight years old. Well, it was six years old and 60 pounds. Oh. So then, and then the child could go into the back seat. Now there was a recommendation during that time that the child would be, had to be four feet nine. But that was just a recommendation. The law was six years old and 60 pounds. So now it's changed. It's eight years but also, if your child is older than eight and under four feet nine, they still should be in a booster seat. I see. So it has less to do with weight and more to do with height That's a and age, obviously. Yes. There's no weight restriction at all on this one. So kids with, with parents with heavier children and that are under four feet nine still need to be in a booster or car seat that fits them. Okay. Okay. So what are the fines? What if, what if you don't comply? What are, what are the fines or the what, what happens to you if you don't comply with this new law? Well, of course, the law, enforcer, uh, law enforcement officers can pull you over and the local fines and fines mixed in can be a minimum of $475 and you get a point on your driver's license now, which was not the same before. Before you didn't get the point and now you do as well as increased fines. So, and that applies to each child under 16 who isn't properly restrained. Oh, okay, so they can fine you for? Every single child. Oh. As well as any adult 
that's not properly restrained as well. Okay, so that's pretty expensive, you know, along with any sort of increase in insurance you might have to pay mm -hmm. because of this. So what are the costs of a booster seat and, and are they easy to get or where would I get? Booster one. seats are fairly inexpensive and they're widely available. You can get them on the internet, you can get them at regular discount stores like Target, and you can get them at regular baby stores as well. Uh, a, a small booster seat with no back will cost anywhere from $15 to $20. A booster seat with a back, which may cost a little bit more but not much, and compared to the rate of a fine, you really get a lot of bang for your buck, plus you're protecting your children in the case of a crash. Okay, yeah, that makes that makes a lot of sense there. So how, so how do you get your child in a booster seat if they've previously not been one, not been in one, or if they're if they're, you know, not used to it? If they're six years old now and the new law passed, making it eight and four foot nine and under, how do you get them back into the car seat booster seat mode? Well, you know, kids will feel okay if they know their peers are actually having to do it too. So one of the things you can say as a parent is all your friends are going to be in booster seats now. Uh, the other thing is to say that, hey, it's going to raise you up. You can look out the window better. It's more comfortable for you. You emphasize that it's safety. Hey, look, I really care about you. And this is the safest thing it is to protect you in a crash. And then also the last one, of course, is uh, if you're caught out of a booster seat, then I get a large fine, and then we have less money to pay for other things, especially your toys, so it's a good idea. But the idea is to make it non-negotiable. This is just something that needs to be done every single time a child that's under 8 or under 4 feet 9 gets into the car. I like the peer, the peer-to-peer -peer one. If all your friends are doing it, yes, it might mean, might make it a little easier to, uh, to get the child back in the booster seat or car seat. So um, is there a weight exemption for booster seats? No, we, we already talked about that, but there is no weight exem exemption at all. Uh, what happens when a kid is around four or 40 pounds, they might outgrow their first car seat their, or their second car seat as a toddler, and then they would transition to a booster seat. Now the thing to know is that there are various types of booster seats. There's the flat booster seat that fits in with no back. There's a better booster seat with, uh, it's not necessarily back better, but it's a high booster seat with a high back that cushions the child more. And depending on the size of your child and what fits in your car is what you'll use for your selection. Okay. So where can I find a car seat, booster seat, uh, product information that'll help me, you know, select the best? Well, there is no best car seat or booster seat. Again, it's what fits your child, what fits into the vehicle, and what you and your child are going to use all the time, what's most convenient for you. The idea is to make sure that it happens all the time, but if you want recommendations or product reviews, you can go to a website run by the American uh, Academy of Pediatric Physicians, and that is www healthychildren.org that'll give you some information on booster seats and car seats as well. Okay, so that was uh, www.healthychildren.org, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's for booster seat and car seat uh, product information there. Yeah. And how can you um, how can you be sure that you've installed the car seat or the booster seat correctly and that it's fitting your child properly? I mean, we talked about how the the booster seat and the car seat and needs to fit with the seat belt, but how do you know that the car seat is in, s installed in the car properly? Well, one of the things you can do is after reading the directions, which some parents think is like um, really complicated in rocket science, and it can be, is you can take it to a national certified car seat technician and the local CHP or your fire station usually have car seat technicians that are qualified to check these out. So one of the things to do is actually call in advance, 
for an appointment. You can't just drive in because they're busy. So the CHP on East Blanco Road will have a car seat technician and one of the fire stations at the Presidio of Monterey has a car seat technician. And so you just make the appointment come in and they'll check to make sure one that your car seat is correctly installed and two if it's the right fit for your child. Okay. Great. And then what else, you know, would would do parents need to know to keep their children safe um, in the car and um, any any other type of you know, safety tips that you may have for parents? Well, it's good to know a little bit more about the car seat laws. For instance, uh, for infants, it's the law that an infant has to be in a car seat in the back facing backwards, not facing forward, and they have to stay there until one year or 20 pounds. At that point, they still need to be in a car seat uh, it's recommended that toddlers up to two years actually stay in a car seat facing backwards oh. because that is really the safest way. After two years or 40 pounds, they can turn around and face forward, but really kids up to age 13 need to be in the back seat. So it's important to know that as well. Yeah, that's, that is some good takeaway uh, from, from this conversation here. The back seat. Under 13 years old, is that what you said? Uh, the kids 13 years of age and younger need to be in the back seat. That's the safest way. That's a recommendation, not the law. And the same with the toddlers. The, the law is for uh, infants need to be in the back seat facing rear, and uh, the eight and under need to be in a car seat or a booster seat are the two main portions of the law. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Susan. Um, I want to really, I, I want to thank you for for sharing this uh, very important information with us. It's um, nice to know, get some clarity on some of the new laws. There's been so many of them that were recently passed, and I'm really glad that you can come and share with us uh, some of these specifics because there's a lot to it. There's a lot to car seats and being safe in the car, and uh, you know, negotiating who's in there, and uh, the penalties seem pretty high too these days. Um, <clears throat> if you'd like any uh, additional information about anything you've heard regarding car seats or booster seats and the new law, please visit the Monterey County Health Department online at www.mtyhd.org. Again, that's www.mtyhd.org. Right now we're going to take a short break, but don't touch that dial. We'll be back with more Your Health Television program in just a moment.